welcome back to Nikki's Scrapbooking Adventures. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. As you can see here, I've got a crescent moon shape on a white background with a light blue border. Now, let's just talk about this collection for a second. This is the Hello Baby Boy collection by Echo Park. And I have a lot of this collection. In fact, I think I either, I think I had three collection packs and one 12 by 12 pattern paper book. I think that's what it is plus one or two of the solids kits. <laughs> that is a lot of paper. And I ordered directly from Echo Park because this is now a discontinued line. And I got it while I was pregnant because I had assumed I would use all of the papers in my son's baby book. All of them. Because I wanted them to be consistent. I wanted to have the same collection. That did not happen. His baby book is done, and I still have at least a collection and a half worth of paper. So, lesson learned. <laughs> so, I, usually if I were to have a collection, I would not do something like this that would have an odd shape. I just wouldn't because I didn't want to waste the paper. Well, I have like six of these papers because I have so many collections. I have a full collection pack that's still not even open and I have a bazillion papers left. But anyway, <laughs> I really, really like this collection. I, I was thinking about selling that collection pack that's not touched and I didn't want to because I still love this collection. I'm obsessed with it. Clearly, I have too much of the paper. But one of the layouts that I really, really, really wanted to do, I found on Pinterest. And that is where we're pulling inspiration today. So this is from scrapbook.com. I don't know who did this, but look at how cute that is. So I feel like I have to do a dreaming baby boy picture, right? And I'm also pulling in inspiration from the Echo Park paper blog and this is actually the um, companion kit Hello Baby Girl and they had the moon and I got the border idea from that from this one and I'm actually gonna do some stitching which I don't normally do so you're gonna have to bear with me in addition I'm not gonna just do a straight stitch I'm gonna do a stitch I've never done before which is the chain link stitch because people like Paige Evans do an awesome job on that and it it makes it look so thick a great awesome border now here's the tricky part right what color do I use I didn't have anything that matched the blues not even the navy nothing that matched the blues so I was up to either white which I thought was boring or yellow so I think I'm going to do the yellow because the moons in this collection are yellow, which I thought was kind of cute. So I'm going to set this up how I think all my photos and everything is going to land. When I say that I have a lot of this paper, I have a lot of the paper. And I also bought some 6x6 pads, Pastel Brights and Pastels matte stack both from dcwv that the yellows and oranges matched this collection that was the hard part for me was finding some of these six by six pads that matched so like this is actually a pretty good match um just so you know if you want most likely this pastel matte stack would actually work for the hello baby girl too because it's got that lighter orange just so in case you are wondering. So that's what I did for my embellishments, primarily on this page. If you look, both of those pages are not highly embellished. Like this one's got a lot more stars and this one has some clouds. So I'm gonna do a little bit of both, okay? This is my photo. 
and it's my son putting his hand over his face while I'm feeding him a bottle and he's in my lap. And my title is actually going to be one of the 4x3 cards from this collection. And it says, of all the things my hands have held, the best by far is you. And this is the perfect saying for this layout. Because as my son gets older, I know my time is coming to an end when he will want to be held and fed with a bottle and me holding the bottle and those kinds of things for him while he's falling asleep. So I feel like I have to document it. Now, I chose to go the cloud route and I flippin' love this punch. I don't know that it's available anymore. It's a honkin' big one by Martha Stewart. I love it, love it, love it, love it. And I even love that it has teardrops or raindrops for this, which is fantastic. But anyway, I'm gonna set this page up the way that I think I'm gonna do it. So I cut these in three different colors. I did the dark teal, the light teal, and then a gray. Okay, and then I cut out one of those little clouds because I think they're just adorable. Why not, right? So that's my first cluster down there. My second cluster is going to go up in this left hand corner. So I've got the dark teal, the light blue, and then the gray, and I'm purposely stacking them like this. So it kind of looks like a shadow. Okay, and then I've got this one right here. And I thought I ended up actually landing these randomly across my page, these little white fussy cuts, but then I realized they were kind of in line with each other. So I'm trying to actually keep it like that. Then my final cluster of clouds is gonna be in the upper right hand corner. This I think is actually going to tuck under, so I have to be cautious of that when I go to stitch, right? And a little bit of that, and a little bit of this, okay? And then my white cloud is going to land right on top. Super cute, super, super cute. Final thing that I'm going to add to this page, after it's all said and done, is I punched out some yellow stars just using a one and a half inch star punch. And that is going to hang from the clouds. Right there. Haven't quite figured out this part of it yet. I'm going to do the stitching first. So now that I have my layout all done, I'm going to mark where my photos and things are going to be because my stitching doesn't have to really go past those lines. So I've got my cloud here, my photo here, my photo here, and I'm doing this a very lightly. And then I've got a cloud here and a cloud here. Okay. And this cloud actually needs to be glued down now because I think my stitching is going to run into it. So I'm just going to get that tacked down. The way that I want it. And then I'm going to tack down the end of my moon. Now let's talk about this moon shape. I, for the life of me, could not ever figure out how to draw a crescent moon. <sighs> so irritating. If you use a template, you can't use the same size circle on the inside because then the edges wouldn't meet. So what I ended up doing is I just used a template that I had, and you could do this with a plate. That's a similar situation, right? And I had a probably a 8, eight by 12 scrap of this paper. And I just drew my outside circle and then free handed the inside circle so the edges meet. That's all I did to draw that moon. I've got that cloud adhered down. I've got my pencil marks where my photos 
and ephemera are going to land. But now we need to poke the holes for the stitching. So I have here one of those Play Kid mats that I use to stand on <laughs> while I'm scrapbooking because I stand while I scrapbook. And it's just going to be the thing that I can poke my thumbtack through. Okay, so I've got my mark here. I'm going to actually poke a hole past the mark and then on the mark. And then I'm going to poke a hole at the tip of here. And then that spacing is probably what I'm going to end up doing for the rest. Because you don't want your chain stitch to be too long. It'll look funny, right? So I'm going to mark right where my hole is and then a little bit past it. And then just continue to poke some holes about a quarter of an inch apart. Along the outside edge of my moon shape. Now the point of this stitching is not to adhere the crescent moon to the back paper. That is not the case. If it was, I should be stitching on the actual crescent moon shape, but I'm not doing that. Okay, so then I see my other mark here. I'm going to poke a hole, poke one past it, and then again continue about a quarter of an inch apart, which is about my width of my finger. Well, probably a half inch apart two of my fingers around an inch. Okay. Note that the more holes you make, the more stitches you have to do. Just as you're thinking about doing this. Okay, so then I'm going to take my thread. Single sided. It looks like I've already got a piece that I cut off from another layout. So I'm just going to go ahead and use that piece. Okay. I have to always use a needle threader. And that's what that looks like. They're super cheap. You can get like two or three for a buck at Walmart. You could probably get something faster, cheaper, but you're going to thread that through your needle eye, thread your string through the needle threader, and then pull the string through. Now, if you're super fancy and you wanted to split this, there's six strands, you could do three and three have this and then tie a knot. That'll be the same thickness as just a single strand. I do not recommend folding a single strand because this is going to be way too thick for your layout. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to tie a knot at just one end. I'm going to get it as close as I can to the end, and I'm going to do it again. I'm going to tie two knots on top of each other so that it will not go through. Now some people will use tape. I use tape after I've knotted it to, so it doesn't mess with the layout behind it when you try to put it in your sleeve. So now I've got a semi-thick knot. Okay. So coming from the back. I'm going to find my first hole right here, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to work my way this way and then up that way, because these are easier than this one, okay? So I'm going to find my first hole going from the back, because that's where I want my knot, and then going through the top. When you're doing this, I always put my finger here so that I prevent knots, right? Okay, and then going through the back again, same hole we started with, and then up, and then down that same hole. That is the start of your chain link. Okay, 
So see how nice and thick that is? Okay, and I'm not going on top. I'm going on the outside of my moon. And then my third, I'm going to go through the back, putting a finger between the, the string so that it doesn't catch. And then I am going to slip this, my needle, underneath those two stitches I did before that were in the same hole. And then pull and put it forward. Now, when you put your needle through, try not to get into your string here. It'll make it look messy. Okay. And then there is your chain link. Okay. And then again, repeating that process, going through the back. I always have to turn it because I can't feel where my needle goes. Put my finger between so that it doesn't catch and make a knot. See how it kind of likes to make a knot. Go slow if you need to. And then I'm gonna stick my needle underneath there to grab the last two stitches. Pull. And then go back down through the same hole that I just came up from. And that is your chain link stitch. So I'm just gonna continue going through. I'll stop every now and then to kind of give you advice on how to do this. But again, it's just gonna be flipping back and forth, back and forth. Okay, so one thing that happens sometimes is you miscount, right? So I accidentally went through the wrong hole. I went past it, but I don't wanna do that. If I were to have this split apart and then doubled, I would have to cut the string in order for me to pull that out. But because this is a single strand and not looped, I can just take this off and pull this out super easy and then just re-thread my string. So I'm just trying to convince you to do, to learn from my mistakes and uh, just do a whole strand instead because I'm not the best at stitching and I'm going to make mistakes. So I'm just going to continue doing this and then I will come back when I run out of thread because that is going to be soon. Okay, so I've gotten to the point where I'm going to turn the corner. I'm like almost out of thread, but I'm going to try to get at least this one done. So I'm gonna just do the same thing. Even though I'm turning a corner, it should not matter because I should still be able to go through and go underneath my two previous stitches and back through the same hole that I came up on. And that should, in theory, make a, let's see, kind of make it look a little wonky, huh? Let's think about this here. It wants to pull down. So I'm going to take my needle off. I'm going to pull my string back up. I'm not sure which one. There we go. And then pull it back. Let's think. Oh, I think I know what I'm going to do. Instead of going around like a normal chain stitch, I'm going to do the same stitch I did in the beginning where hang on, I just went into the same hole twice. So that's a nice crisp turn. Okay. So I'm going to go into this hole again. And then the whole the second time. And I am actually going to tie this off at this point because I don't have enough string. So to tie it off, 
I am going to go underneath the previous stitch and go back through to make a knot. And I'm going to do that two times. Okay, let's look how, and that did not change the front, just the back. So now I've got this tied and that tied. I'm going to get a new piece of string. Now, I don't recommend going over 24 inches, even though that'll make, well, I wouldn't go over three feet. Because what will happen is if your string is too long, you're more likely to get knots. And knots, my friends, are awful to get out. You can prevent it by using your finger underneath. But it's just a pain. This might be even a little too long. I'd rather just stick with the shorter pieces. Okay. So... I lick the end of my string. Don't do this while you're sick, because then you're going to get everybody sick who touches your scrapbook. I'm just kidding. They won't touch the back of the scrapbook. It'll be fine. <laughs> back of the page. Okay. So there's that. And again, I'm going to tie my double knot. Now, when I start this one, it's going to be just a little bit different. Because I had to start the look of the chain stitch on that first one. Well, I don't have to start the look of the chain stitch right now because I already have it going. So what I can do is ignore this hole here and go to the one next to it. Push my needle through. Making sure that I don't get caught. This is actually... A good time to talk about what I do. I just take regular transparent tape and tape it right over that knot. That gets it out of the way and then I'll just snip it as close as I can to the tape. That gets it out of the way. It's not, I don't care that it's acid free or not because it's not touching any of my photos. It's on the back of the layout. And now my string is not going to get caught up with that loose tail. Pull that through. Go back. And chain stitch this. See how that knot can form super quick? We don't want that. And then go back down the hole. Making sure I'm pulling this aside so that I can poke my hole, poke through my hole without grabbing the knot. Pulling this straight so we don't get any knots. And that one's done. Okay, so now I'm going to do a couple more and then I'll tape this down. Actually, I don't even know. I'll probably tape that down at the end. Because that's not going to be in my way anymore. It was only in the way in the first stitch because I had to go back down the same hole that the knot was in. Okay. And now I don't have to do that anymore because I am going down the same hole I got up on. Came up on. Okay. Okay. So I ended where my pencil mark was because that's where my photo is going to be. So now I need to jump to this hole right here. Well, I don't really want to waste the string. So again, I'm just tying this off like I did before. And I'm going to double knot it, maybe. Okay. And go through again. And voila. I will be double knotted. So I'm going to start again at the same spot I did, just like I did here. Put a little tape, cut a little off, and just keep going. 
So, I have finished stitching around my layout. It didn't take me too long because it's not a huge stitching portion. Now, we're going to work on decorating. Okay, so I already started with this star. My goal is to have this star hang from the moon at the end. So I just tied a knot and used my Tombow Mono Liquid Aqua to adhere the strand straight up. What I'll end up doing is I'm going to draw a line of glue again and press this down. The tricky part is going to be adhering the star. So my plan is to use these thin 3D foam squares by Scrapbook Adhesives and I will link those below. And because these are so thin and I have layered this star up, it's not going to super bulk out my layout. So that should make it even, which it does. So it's got a little bit of a shadow now, which is fun. Okay, and then I've got my pictures in the land right about there. Okay, and then notice that this stitch doesn't go all the way to my cut apart card. That's fine because I remember I'm gonna have my clouds here. And I am going to pop up some of these on foam. I have to because of the stitching, right? So I've got a couple different adhesives, right? Got this Big Mama foam tape and I got some leftovers and I'll link this one down below because I love, love, love this foam tape. It's just double-sided foam for and I can die cut out of them, which is awesome. Okay. So let's see here. Right. And then I am going to have to cut this just a little bit off. And I'm just using leftovers. Not a big deal, right? And I can pull this transfer tape off. And this is a great way to use your leftover foam is to back photos because you'll get, you don't need a full foam sheet. It's just not necessary. So upside, the right side up here, again just checking placement because I don't want to have to pull this back up because this stuff does not pull up very well. Okay, there's that. And then this one. Right there. Notice there's a little overhang. It doesn't matter because my clouds are going to cover that up. So now my clouds have to have at least this height because my photos are up. So we're going to just put a couple of those. This is the trouble with doing stitching on your layout, right? Because you have to then make everything kind of popped up on foam. Now let's talk journaling, right? Because I want to put a little something something on here just to say how sweet it is that at this stage in life, I'm still able to rock you to sleep, but I know that time is coming to an end quickly. So I think what I'm going to end up doing is 
putting it right down here. I want to leave, though that's too cute to, to mess with, right? So I think I'm going to write in gray because I don't want it to be in yellow because that yellow is already taken. I'm going to do it right along this line. And if I need to, then I can... I don't think I will, though. Well, I don't want to do it right across the line. Just kidding. Change my mind. I'm going to draw a pencil mark. Right in there. Because that's as far as I can go, right? Oh, yeah. The gray is going to look great. So... I am trying to soak up these little moments. Where I can lock you to sleep soon you won't be so little anymore And I double checked the date and it was January 18th. 18th, 2022. Okay, so a little bit more than I anticipated, but that's that. My journaling's on there, it's done, I like it, it's in gray. And that is my layout. I'll have some finished close ups below. Check the links in the description. You'll be able to find this collection, which I love. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to check out my other videos. There is a hidden giveaway. So have a wonderful day, and I will see you next time.